Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Well, my wife said it best. Amen. Keep us in prayer. We've been gone since 630 this morning. We're actually early in that because we had to leave up out here. So it's just like 530 this morning. I told my wife, amen, around 9 o'clock, I'm going to take a nap. I ain't had a nap all week. But by 8.15, I get a text from the YMCA that we're supposed to have this uh, networking event today. And the director and the other director couldn't make it. So then guess what? That nap was gone because somebody had to commit to it. Amen. And, and it was us, me and my baby here. And uh, so that nap never happened. Praise God. And so, um, so I'm going to tell you straight at 6 o'clock, you know, say what you're going to do. Amen. The Lord has the final say. Amen. And I tell you what, it was God because of all the connection. It was a, it was actually a networking um, get together with all these different companies and groups and everybody talking about what they're doing, their programs. So many doors open today for us. Some doors we've been trying to close, close for us, like looking for some people to come in and pour to our young people. God had everything there we needed. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. And then how I many know we weren't even tired? Then, like, you know, right. I said, well, I'm going to get some coffee. Never got the coffee. Amen. But we had a Holy Ghost time. So, right. amen. But, you know, it was something we helped set up for the Y, a great opportunity. Like I said, to network, put the Y's programs out there. They didn't come through. But then God said, there's two committed people. Amen. Mm -hmm. that can step in. Amen. I mean, no, the difference between a person who reach what he want in life and a person who never reach what he wants. Mm -hmm. Amen. One goes and two, he gets it. The other one just stops somewhere in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. wow. You can't let obstacles and whatever come up stop mm -hmm. you. I'm going to be real practical today. I want to look at some natural things, amen, that are also spiritual, but sometimes we get so super spiritual, we no good. Right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some natural things we can do to develop persistence or commitment. Same thing. You know, they, they go hand in hand. And so that's the first thing you need to know about a person, amen, that's successful. They don't stop till they reach a particular goal or get to where they said they were going. Yeah. yeah. God tells you to go to New York. You can't stop in Jersey. Amen. Amen. You know, that's what I love about Joseph. Joseph could have stopped in a lot of places. Could have stopped in Potter's for his house. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. But I heard a preacher preach that favor in prison wasn't good enough. Because that's not the final destination that God had for him. For him. Right. right. Come on. Amen. His own brothers tried to kill him. Y'all know the story on, on, on. But he was consistent and committed, come on, to the yeah. dream. Yes. Amen. And we know the end result yes. that not only did he spare his life, but he was able to spare, come yes, on, amen. all those connected That's to him. Right. Amen. That's Hallelujah. Right. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We learned a lot for those who, who hooked up with us at Broken Burrows, Apostle Broken Burrows service, our covenant service. Um, amen. We looked at uh, Daniel and how committed he was what, to prayer. Come on. And, and they couldn't find nothing on him except on him. for this guy's praying to his God. Come on. Amen. And the Bible says he got up in the window and looked towards the room. In other words, whatever. This is what I'm called to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you look before that, he was committed to his diet. They were yes. told not to eat certain foods. Mm -hmm. Some of us can't even commit to the doctor's order. <laughs> Come on, the doctor tells us don't eat this or that. Come on. And, and I'm being honest. And then we go ahead and eat it anyway. And then we ask Jesus to come and heal us. <laughs> Jesus said, I try to heal you with the doctor's instructions. Uh-oh. I knew I wouldn't get no help now. We all super spiritual. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You know, I never forget. We went to Dorney Park. And we took the church to Dorney Park. And this one particular lady, no good and well, she wasn't going to eat no fried chicken. <laughs> she decides she wanted to bust some chicken the first hour we're there. Then she gets sick. You know, they talking about, Paso, you got to take such and such to the uh, hospital. Pray for me. I said, no, I don't. I'm going on a roller coaster. First of all, <laughs> you should have that chicken. All right, number one. Number two, I paid for everybody to go. Why I got to go? Come on. I'm going on a roller coaster. I plead the blood over her body. Come on. One of y'all going to go. 
And then the lesson in that story, I didn't go. She got, you know, went to the hospital. Amen. Somebody else took her. Praise God. And I rode the roller coaster. <laughs> Amen. Well, I got to get punished when I obey. Come on. You know, they tell you get in the roller coaster, put your thing on, don't stand up. Come on, you want to stand up and you flip out. You know, come on. Then you, you want to sue somebody. No, you have to follow the instructions. So sometimes we got to commit to the doctor's instructions and not for a week, not for two weeks, not for three, to the duration of the prescription. Amen. Oh, I'm ready to preach right now. All right. Come on. We go on there, you know. Sometimes they give you like uh, antibiotics. Well, I don't feel the symptoms anymore. You still supposed yes. to take them four or five days after you feel the symptoms. Amen. So the infection is what? All the way out to your body. Well, Jesus is a healer. Yeah, he healer. Anoint doctors. Come on. Amen. Right now. Well, if you believe that, amen. I believe he's a healer. Get rid of all your medicine. Come on, don't pick and choose which ones you get rid of. <laughs> so we got to stay committed. Come on. Stay committed. To instructions. Yes. I ain't hearing nobody. Amen. So if you're going to be successful, amen, you got to be committed to whatever the task is. So God call you something. You know, so many people never reach their full potential. And so I want to give you a couple keys on how to stay committed, stay persistent. I like the word persistent, same thing. Amen. Amen. So you can stop quitting, starting stuff, quitting, start. And then one got nerve to ask God, God, what's next? God ain't going to give you what's next until <laughs> you finish the first thing he told you. Amen. And you sitting up there and pray. He got out of that. Speak to me, Lord. He said, man, I ain't told you what to do. And then he come back, do. Oh, I ain't heard it. No, I ain't tell, giving you why. Why would he tell you do something else and you ain't did the first thing? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. How many of you graduate from high school? You ain't graduate from kindergarten to 12th grade. Come on. There were some steps you had to take. Amen. Can I get amen? Amen. Amen. And so this is one of the most important development commitment. Write this down. It's one of the most important tasks that a person who wants to be successful, come on, must learn how to do. I thank God for good coaching when I was young. Man, they told me when I was five, six, no, seven years old, quitters never win and winners never quit. When the tough get going, get tough with the going. These are the things these coaches put in. Come on. Mm -hmm. You can be down 20, but the game ain't over till you hear that final clock. Mm -hmm. And there were times we were down 20 and came back and won. Why? Because we stayed committed to the clock. Mm -hmm. We didn't throw the towel. Come on. Thank Noah you. writes his man fall, what, seven times? Got to get back up. It ain't over because you fell down. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, glory to God. Lord, so step God. number one, if you ever going to develop commitment, write this down. This is one of my first keys. You got to forget about your feelings. I talked a lot about that on Sunday. It's one of the major mistakes, Carolyn, that we made. You know, you try to commit to a task. Some people think that they should only, watch this here, keep going while they're feeling good. <laughs> I feel good. Don't you know no good? <laughs> That's completely wrong. <laughs> the Bible even says, preach the word in season, out of season, whether see. it's convenient or what. Into it. You don't just preach on payday. Oh, my yeah. God. What about when they mess up your check? <laughs> we call to preach hell or hot water. It ain't based on how you feel. Right. Some of us serve based on how we feel. Our commitment level mm -hmm. cease based on or go based on how we feel. Now, let, let me help y'all. That's why the old saints sang that song. I feel like going on. Because there are going to be days where you don't feel like going on. Come on. And so, you know, you can't just, if you go by feelings, you're done. Come on, you know I'm preaching real good. Amen. You're Amen. done every time. Done. So the difference between those who watch this here, who commit to certain tasks and those who don't, is the first group keeps going. Even when they feel bad, when they feel sad, miserable, they down, they feel busted and disgusted. Yeah. Come on. And the second group start, stops as soon as they get a little win of adversity or feel bad. Wow, well, feel good. Mm. Amen. So now I'm just going to throw the towel in. All right. Do you know that 90% of the time on a missions trip, amen, we go to places we don't feel like going to? We ain't in Jamaica. Come on, at the right. resort of Jamaica, 
come on, the resorts in the Bahamas. I mean, we in the villages and jungles and stuff like that. But if it was based on what we feel like doing, I'm telling you right now, I don't feel like going on on some of these trips. <laughs> I said that, uh, alluded to that on Sunday. Come on, when I thank God for my bishop, he went to uh, Guyana, saw all these spiders and all that man talked the other day, actually before I preached the other day. And he was talking about, man, he was afraid. I thank God for him being truthful. Mm -hmm. Come on. But it didn't stop him. You don't go based on how you feel. Come on, God tell you, you stay committed to your task. And whenever you're called to do something for God, the devil ain't going to just sit there and make things easy for you. I wish somebody can hear me. Right. I remember we challenged some folks in our church years ago to go get a house. And the moment they took the challenge, hell broke loose in 90% of their finances. Mm. And some of them quit. Others pursued and held on because they know it was God. The mm -hmm. devil ain't gonna sit there and just let you walk right. in there. Hey, it seems like the more you try to save, stuff start happening. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. But you gotta hold on to that dream and hold on to that vision. Come on, Joseph didn't let it go because his brothers tried to kill him. Joseph didn't let it go when he was sold into slavery. Joseph didn't let it go when they threw him in a cistern. Come on, Joseph didn't let it go when they forgot about him in prison. Right. Joseph didn't let it go. Right. That's right. That's right. He yeah. held on to the vision. He held on to the dream because he know that watch this here that it was going to be some hard days. That Nehemiah yeah. had some tasks. He had opposition within, opposition without. Come on, he ain't always feel, but he prayed. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Had the sword in one hand and prayed. Come yeah, on, somebody. Y'all not him and was working with one hand and had the sword in the other. The sword yeah. represents the word of God. Come Amen. on, man, when you don't feel like going on, that's when you got to get your mind on spiritual things. Close. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And in 52 yes. days, he got the job done. Hallelujah. Not 54, 52. 52. <laughs> and he had opposition within, opposition without. Come on, Joe, when God called Joe, he said, have you considered, he didn't go to his wife, he knew his wife wasn't committed like committed. Joe. <laughs> but let me show you how powerful Job is, because Job was committed to God. When it was time for restoration, he stayed committed to the same wife. Yes. Here we go. We're in a day now where, you know, we can't work out problems. We don't actually blame the other. You are the problem. No, man. You in there together. She the problem. You the problem. If he the problem, you the problem. Because remember the two became one. Get in there and work some stuff out. People talk about how y'all two married so long. Because we committed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Even when we make each other mad. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we got some faces we do sometimes. <laughs> but we don't be like, bye, come on. We never do this, bye. Yeah, I don't like her sometimes. What she does, she don't like me. But we love each other enough to work it out. Amen. Amen. You always think the grass is greener on the other side till you kiss them and their teeth fall out. <laughs> you know what? That really is. <laughs> yeah, don't don't get me preaching real good now. <laughs> What's that over there? That's the body part you thought was mine. Oh, I forgot to put it on. <laughs> I'm going back home. No, nope, too late now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Gave up. Mm, mm, mm. Got to hang in there. Yes, yes. Every marriage will be tested. I don't know why I got here. Come on, I'm speaking to somebody prophetic. More. Come That's on, you're going to have some time. Now, can I just go there? You ain't going to keep having the same problems. That's something. Yeah. See, see, that I mean, you ain't committed to God if you have the same problems. Now, Joseph, yeah. uh, David, David made some mistakes, but he didn't keep making the same mistakes. If you keep dealing with the same stuff, oh, come on, you keep making the same mistakes, you ain't committed to God. Amen. Uh -oh. Amen. Uh -oh. Good point. And you're definitely not committed to one another because you can't keep hurting somebody and keep hurting. And you mm -hmm. can't say, but sorry, but so much. You, you know, yeah, come on. Yeah. Um, to yeah. a place now, you saying sorry don't matter because your actions right. are not changing. Um, right. All right now. I think I need to take a sip of water on that. But then they get to a place where, you know, I said I'm sorry. Well, I don't care anymore because I don't know if you mean it. Because right. the word repent don't mean I'm sorry. It means a change in one's actions. Right. That's it. Right. Right. Oh, come on. You keep that about now. Yeah. Yeah. You are sorry. You're right. You are sorry. Oh, yeah. Number two, you got to forget about the right time. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that some of us always wait for perfect conditions to do something. Mm. Come on. The most, one of the biggest mistakes we make, amen, 
is we always want to wait for the right time to start something. <laughs> the right time is the time God tells you to start. All right. Even if the circumstances are not favorable. All right. Amen. Write this down. The problem with the right time concept is that the right time never arrives. And so the person remains on stand in a standby mood hmm. until he run out of time. Wow. Let me say that again. The problem with the right time is that the right time never arrives. So the person remains standing still or on standby until he runs out of time. Hmm. Hmm. Now, when you run out of time, can I just go there? It ain't the wrong time or the right time. Out of time. <laughs> Too late. What happened? You missed your opportunity. Oh, yes. You know, you got a certain time to get on a plane. And they don't care who you are. If you don't have a certain plane, certain time, come on. Yep. Even if you're on standby. Those on standby to get a ticket got a certain time that they can stand by. That's right. I ain't here. Yeah. Amen. Can I get an amen? If you want to be a productive person, you got to start even if you don't feel like it's the right time. Yes, yes. Come on, the devil ain't going to sit there and tell you, yeah, here it is, one, two, three, start. He's going to always try to frustrate the start because he knows 90% of Christians, when it ain't favorable, they won't even start a thing. Because they always waiting for perfect conditions. Yes. You know what that is? Procrastination. Amen. Um, You're procrastinating. And you're gonna act like God ain't say start yet. No, you don't want to start yet because you don't feel like it's the right time. Because my money ain't right. Amen. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Now, if you wait for your money to get right, can I preach to y'all? Uh huh. That's all I'm gonna say. Carlin just said, it. Ooh, you ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you know, if you look at Acts chapter three, it's a story about two broke preachers and a, and a, and a crippled man. <laughs> Come on, remember Peter Amen. John said, "Silver yeah. and gold we have not." We have not. Preachers. But they didn't quit doing what they were anointed to do. That's right. That's right. That's Somebody right. say, "Amen." Amen. 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 They said, "Silver and gold." Okay, we ain't got no money. We broke is H E L L. Come on, somebody. It's L is broke. But guess what? We still got the Holy Ghost. Come on, we still got God's ability. And I tell yes. you what. When you start working where you are, chapter four, it was no lack among none of them. They wasn't broke no more. Right. Hey, watch this here. The story changed. Two rich preachers, come on, and a heel man. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, all because somebody said, get ready. I mean, God says, I want to change your story, but you got to stop quitting. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. <laughs> I mean, they said, silver and gold, we have not broke. Yeah. Two broke apostles. <laughs> but they didn't allow their circumstances to stop the time that God wanted to use them to All heal right. this lame yes, man. Amen. Amen. You can change your narrative too. Mm -hmm. Broke the day, rich tomorrow. Y'all not here. Ah. All right. Sick the All day, right. heal tomorrow. Come on. Right. I mean, look how that story changed. Two broke preachers, <laughs> amen, and a crippled man. That's look like a story that's going to end bad. Right. But it not only ends so well, that if you keep reading, come on. Mm. Not only they wasn't broke, everybody, the whole congregation got well. <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> huh? Come on, the Bible says there was no lack among none of them. No, not no, just no. no lack. No lack. Uh-uh. You got to stay committed to them ties. You got to stay committed to them offers. Go oh, man, my money tight. No, that's when you need. If what you are sowing doesn't watch it, what you have don't meet the need, then some of it is seed. That's right. All right. All right. So you got to forget about the right time syndrome. I'm telling you right now, you'll never start anything waiting for the right time, and then you'll hmm. be out of time. Are oh, you hearing me? Because you yes. missed your opportunity. You missed your opportunity. I said I wasn't going to preach tonight, but I was trying to stay out the Bible too much. But I'm a Bible man. Amen. So you can learn from them two broke preachers and the crippled man. Amen. That you don't give up because circumstances are not favorable. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Thank um, my wife for that. Thank my wife for that revelation. <laughs> he found something. He said, look at this. This is about two broke preachers and a crippled man. Now, that's all she said. And I said, oh, I can work that. And I said, oh, I just worked it. 
Work it. Work it. <laughs> All right. All right. Man. Here's number three. Come on. If you're going to develop commitment and persistence, you can't skip a task. Mm. So let's say you say you're going to walk four days a week and it rains. You either run, walk in the rain or walk before the rain or walk after the rain. You don't just say it rained five days. I ain't walk. Come on. Okay. The Lord told me about three or four months ago, do 300 push up every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. Every day. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't struggle with allergies, but something hit me. And man, I could barely breathe, but you know what he told me? Do your push ups. Mm. Never skip the task because the moment you stop, some of y'all, you, you work out for three days and then you just blow it. You ain't, you ain't got no commitment. Yeah. And then you make all these excuses. Nah, man, committed folks don't make excuses. They make time to do what the task requires. Come on. All right. I ain't never seen so many folks with the Holy Ghost and full of excuses. Mm. I ain't never seen so many people filled with the power of God and so many excuses. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, excuses like buttholes. Everybody got one. Some of them got a lot of them. <laughs> you, you better, come on, stop making excuses. Get a task, stick to it. Buddy. Come on, you got to stick to it. I don't feel like doing push-ups every day. I do them every day, my wife would tell you, every day. Now he ain't, huh? Committed. Yeah. Man, there's times when I'm hurting, I'm tired. Man, I, I, I went through some symptoms about a couple of weeks ago, and the Holy Ghost said, what are you waiting on? Hit, hit the floor, Jack. <laughs> and I hit that floor and made God, and man, I felt good, you know? Amen. So. You know, don't skip a task. Persistence is developed when you train yourself to commit to a task, even when there are, watch this here, are many obstacles. Obstacles, yes. Joseph had a lot of obstacles, but he stayed committed to the task. Amen. Then you had some obstacles. Come on, you go all through the Bible. Yes. Joseph had some obstacles. Yes. Nehemiah had some obstacles. All right. Yes, yes. You're going to have some obstacles, yep. but you got to stick to the task. Somebody it's say amen. 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 Somebody said, man, you know, I'm supposed to walk today, but it started raining. But you waited so long, you should have been there. All right. Some of you waited till it rained, say, that's my excuse. Now you're getting buffed. <laughs> yeah. There's no excuse that if you're going to work out every day, watch it here. It's 24 hours in a day. Amen. Amen. Now, we had a long day, but I ain't worked 24 straight hours. Right. And I made sure in that long day, and this wasn't even planned. The YMCA kind of messed up some stuff, but we stepped in there, but I still, I couldn't say, well, I ain't gonna do my push-up because I gotta do this for the Y. No, I'm gonna do my push-ups and still do this for the Y. I thought I'd get one amen. You gotta oh, stop amen. making excuses. Amen. You gotta stop making excuses. Your doctor tell you work out? Come on. You gotta stop making excuses. That's right. All right. right. The devil gonna make it easy for you to quit, throw the towel in, and have you think in your mind that you deserve a day off. Man, you know, it, it could be crucial to your heart. You got to stay consistent. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm getting about three amens and the rest. I wish you shut the eggs. <laughs> amen. <laughs> uh-uh. But I don't care because I'm here to challenge you tonight. Yes, yes. Amen. You'll never reach your potential. You'll never fully reach your goal if you don't have some sticking power. Yes, ah. that's right, that's right. Sticking power. We're not, we don't live by how we feel. Mm. We're not led by how we feel, we led by the spirit. Yes, amen. And I'm amen. talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some of you used to be led amen. by the wine and spirit. Oh, oh, you hear me? We did better, it seemed like, with that. Oh, you hear me? Because you ain't even really wanted to put you just fell down, tried to get up, <laughs> fell down. You did five because you couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't do it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you ain't know which way was up, which way was down. And you just kept doing it. Mm, Amen. Mm, mm. Wine and spirit. Well, at least you did. Oh, have mercy. Huh? <laughs> Let me give you a couple more. I'm going to get y'all out of here. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Which way is up? Remember that movie? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> now here's the thing, right? This round, you got to get this one. No, it takes time, 
to develop a habit. Mm. Some people say it takes two weeks to develop a certain habit. Others say 21 days. Some say seven days. Come on, but here's the bottom line. It takes time. Amen. So whether seven days, 14, 21, everybody's different. Yes. Come on, somebody, but it takes time to develop a habit. And that's why you got to stay patient enough until you get used to the new task. Come on, somebody. Amen. That you add it to your lifestyle. Amen. 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 So now it's like, I can't tell many days in a row now, but the push up, it became a habit. It's, just, it's like part of my like, lifestyle. Amen. So it ain't nothing hard. It's like easy. It's just easy as breathing. Easy as brushing my teeth. Come on. All right. Have it. I mean, for real, that's how easy it is. Oh, you hear me, Dad? I'm going to get it done. It's done. I got yes. 24 hours to do 300 push-ups. Mm. Divide 300 by 24, Carol. <laughs> okay. I got it, but I want some money. <laughs> okay. It's 24 and 60. 12 and a half. <laughs> yeah. That's 12 an hour. 12 points. Oh my hour. God. 12 and a half. You can't, you, do a half of one. <laughs> you can't do 12 push ups in an hour. That's good. Wow. That's what it comes. I'm not telling you to do 300. That's what you told me. Thank you so very much. <laughs> so let me clear that up. Remember, you got to know what he told you. Because some of you try to do 300, then you can forget being committed to your other stuff. You're done. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I mean where's Carolyn at? She laying up there in the emergency room. Two weeks. Now she way behind. You know, I'm going to do what a possible. No, you got to know what God is telling you. And you got to know your body. I'm Amen. looking at me, though. That means for me that I do 300. And on Sundays, I do five. This past Sunday, the Holy Spirit want to get cute right. and tell me to do 600. After I cooked out all weekend and was hosting and still in the middle of it, I mean, uh, uh, what do you mean, 600? You know how you act like you don't hear him? Hear him. And how many know he speaks again? One thing about the Holy Ghost, he committed to you. Hey, amen. He's hey, hey, he said, I ain't going to leave you nor forsake. But you know what else he'd say sometimes? I ain't going to leave you alone, G. You know. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you got, you got to know it takes time to develop a habit. Amen. Now, here's one of the things that kill us. Uh-oh. Kill any commitment, depending on your friends. So you say, hey, three times a week, we're going to do this. You know that other that workout part, you always <laughs> got an excuse. Either they got one or you got one. So now what you did was you got two people with excuses mm. trying to accomplish one single thing. Uh-oh. Wow. So you got to stop depending on people. That's one of the, most, the fatal mistakes we made. Wow. And it ruins commitment every time that you want a friend to join you and all that, you got to learn how to be self-motivated. Mm. Come on. Amen. If you only run when your friend's available, you're done. If you only take a walk when your friend available, especially if you got the wrong friend, if they halfway committed, come on. And if they <laughs> run only when you are available or walk only when you are available, I'm telling you right there, the task is not going to get done. That's Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. Somebody always trying to counsel. Uh, you know, I, I got to cancel uh, my cat. I mean, I mean, I'll be making up crazy. What in the world does that got to do with anything? The cat, the cat ain't running. <laughs> I mean, the cat ain't even running from a dog. I mean, what are you talking about? I mean, we make us. Okay. I'm, I'm going to shut up because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so you got a solid commitment. Forget about others. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying yeah. you don't need other people. There's some things you do. But when you got a certain task, come on, and especially a reg regiment, like God tells you to work out or whatever it may be, don't depend on other people because I'm telling you right now, they're going to let you down. Amen. Yes. Amen. What if Jesus would allow other people to dictate whether or not he went on? The Bible said he said that day going to come when you're going to eat of my flesh. They all left. They left, yeah. Oh. But Jesus didn't allow them Come on, what they did to Change. dictate right. his commitment. Uh -huh. Amen. He went on, Amen. on to obey his father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what get us. Be even you. in ministry and doing something. People quit. We just want to quit. Why are you quitting? Because they quit. 
Amen. I'm going to take it even further. You shouldn't even have a thought of quitting because they quit. So what? That's right. Especially yeah. when you started before they even got there. Where were they when you start? Where were they in the beginning? They weren't even there, so they quit. So what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We love you. But I ain't quit because you quit. And I ain't even going to jump. Matter of fact, it's going to motivate me it to go even further. further. That's right. That's right. Thank you, God. Thank I'm talking you. about committed folks. That's the actual commitment. I ain't Thank quit. You. Everybody on the screen can quit. I'm still going to do what he told me to do. Amen. Everybody Amen. on the screen can stop giving. I'm not going to stop giving because I, I ain't going to stop doing missions. Amen. Everybody needs to put their own priorities ahead. Amen. Of God. That's going to be your fault, not mine. I'm going to keep doing what he told me to do. He's going to keep sending the seed. Come on. Are you hearing me? Stop yes. thinking yes. that if yes. you stop, the vision stop. Not for mm -hmm. a committed person. All right. Yeah. All right. Now All right. God wants to include everybody, but you know, people get an yeah. attitude. Uh, they ain't getting none of my money. Well, God will, God will say, well, you know, let me get somebody with way more money than what you had in anyway. it. Anyway. Anyhow. And then you take your little attitude and your little bit of money over there, and and, and, and you'll be calling soon. <laughs> or those who started behind you be walking by. Hey, you still there? Right. I help you get saved. How you get past me? Because mm. I stay committed to the word. Mm. I stay committed to the principles. Hey, I, I stay committed when, even when the word challenged me. I ain't want to hear. I ain't get yes. offended. Bump yes. apostle. You know, yes. you know, I get prayers and I'll be like, ooh, somebody ooh, mad at me. <laughs> uh, I, I hear God. Yeah. I just say, Lord, I bless them. I hope they get Amen. over there fast. It ain't going to stop me. That's right. I ain't calling him no more. Let me let me help. <laughs> Thank you. You already know what I just said. Okay. And it's not trying to, I'm not trying to be nasty. Right. But some of you lie what other people do, dictate what you do. Uh-oh. Right. That's right. See, when I started the ministry, I ain't know none of y'all. Right. That's right. Amen. I'm just throwing that out there. Amen. I thank God I met you. But guess what? If you say, you know what? Is loving you is wrong. Oh, that's the wrong <laughs> <song>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be, right. be right. I got it. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, Tony, Tony, you need a time out. Tony, 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 Tony needs some popcorn and a Pepsi. He's in a mission time, like. <laughs> hey, Sister Betty, if nobody else want to hear me, Tony, like, no, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Tony, that's you right. Up, man. Tony had you geeked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tony had you the only one in the church too. Yeah, like, come on, saying. come on, give me more, give me more. My man. Hey, my man. Keep on, my man. I hear your possum. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't let other people. <sighs> Come on, somebody. Depend on other people, especially Amen. your friends, man. And I'm not saying not for anything, but especially, but I'm saying when you got a task, God gives it to you. It's for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. What God has for you is for you. Sometimes we always want to include people on God. So I never want to include them. Okay. Right. That's just you because you always feel like you're incomplete without a crowd. Uh oh. You always got to have people, you know. And I see married couples like that. They can never just do something with just them and they always want to include other couples. Mm. That's a character flaw or something wrong with your marriage. It's a time for that. Right. But the majority of the time, it should be quality time. It should be you two. You too. If you only can have fun when you're with other couples, I'm sorry, y'all know y'all don't really enjoy each other. Each other. Mm. Right. All right. And that's why the pandemic ruined a lot of marriages. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I mean, you know, it starts hitting the fan. You are forced to do something you ain't used to doing. Talk to one another. Mm. Spend wow. time with one another. Then you realize, oh, I don't really like you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I like you better when I can go to work 10 hours a day. <laughs> don't see you. It's supposed to be eight, but I volunteer for contact. <laughs> I'm tired of you working all these extra hours and you ain't getting paid. Oh, I'm getting paid on some peace. I'm tired of being out with a contentious person. Jesus. You better work it overtime than leave and stay committed. Be I am nice. telling you. Be nice. I'm not going. Oh, in no way. Somebody got to talk to yourself. 
No, 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 no way. No way. I'm living without you. Come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all be like, I'm hit, hit the road, Cordy, and don't you come back. That's the wrong song. That's not a commitment song. <laughs> not only hit the road, but don't you ever come back. Ever come back. <laughs> oh. You committing to quitting for real. <laughs> <laughs> Some songs y'all got to stop singing. I don't care that was my jam. Look, look, you always end up single, didn't you? <laughs> All right, now. Hey, Amen. I'm done. Just don't let your friends and people, don't depend on them so much yeah. that yeah. they stop your convictions and your commitment and your persistence. Amen. 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 I'm actually Amen. done because it's like three minutes to eight. Woo. Amen. Amen. Just wanted to come back off of what we did. I'm probably going to tap into more. Got a lot more on commitment. Uh, man, there's so many people in the Bible that was committed. And there's so much we can learn from this. From them, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Got to stay committed to prayer. Yes. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Got to stay committed to encouraging people. The Bible Amen. says always encourage people. Amen. 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 You got to stay committed to pray, praising him. Yes, yes. Huh? Amen. Yes. Let's stay committed to the word. Yes, Come on. Sir. He says, meditate on the word. What does that mean? Ponder on, yes. reflect on, always thinking on, stay committed to the word. Yes, yes. Lord. Study, show thyself approved. approved. You don't read something one time and you get it. Study means over. <clears throat> Come on, I stay committed to studying that word. Why? Because I, I got to have a word. In Amen. Amen. I ain't trying to preach, it's going to rain. That was Noah's word. Get your own word. <laughs> yeah. Hope you like say, I hope it rain and blow you out of here so you we get another word. Like you, uh, yeah, rain, get a boat come and see you later. Sell on. Amen. <laughs> Somebody says time to get committed. It's time, time to get committed. Let's stay committed. Amen. 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 Come on. Did word bless Amen. anybody tonight? Oh Amen. yes. Oh yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna try to stay committed to the hour of power because um and not because we tired, because I'm gonna stay up and watch the game tonight. The devil is a liar. Now I didn't get no coffee early, but guess what? I was like, y'all gonna have me working like that. That's why I said I'm gonna come home and take a nap. So I can stay up and watch the game. Y'all know, come on, ain't nothing wrong with that. How about God said, No, you're gonna go out here and work. Amen. Well, here's the thing. I got paid for it too, though, every minute, every second. Amen. Amen. And had fun. Next thing I know. The people who host the event say, hey, we want to treat everybody at lunch. Oh, wow. Amen. And they start blessings with gifts. Come on. Amen. I was like, well, thank you, Jesus. Really? Got paid, had free lunch. Mm -hmm. I think we got a 12-hour pay today, something crazy like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there like, look at God showing up. Got paid to network. Larry, that's what I do. I network. Right. Beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful. We got a door open for us at Delaware State College to come in, amen, and do some stuff there. Come on. I mean, God just, my wife said, oh, look at him open doors. Amen. We weren't even looking for that. But how many know when you're in position? Because we were committed. committed. Amen. Amen. We say amen. I'm done. I'm great. 7.59. My wife pulled my clock out. 7.59. Some <laughs> time clock, brother. So let's get ready to take our offering. Amen. Our tithes. I mean, our offering and um, mission, our missions. I mean, if you got paid, then tithes. Amen. Some of you get paid on Thursday. Pay, pay tithes. Wait till Saturday. You know you don't spend that money at the moment. You better stop playing with that. I just wait to Saturday service. You know, uh -oh. I got. I know some people pay their tithes a month ahead of time. They know they get the same. But let me pay send it up. Oh, wow. I dare, I dare me do that. <laughs> Some of you need to do that more than the people who do do it. It'll stop you from taking that money to Thanks, Macy's sir. and uh -oh. hello, somebody, Burger uh -oh. King. The only thing, only king you are, Burger King. Burger King ain't probably getting God's money. Ugh. Give you gas. <laughs> <laughs> <If you thought. laughs> All right, let's pray on the offering. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm getting in trouble. Father, we pray on the offering. <laughs> And we know as you give seed to the soul and you multiply the seed so so we thank you for time we thank you for offering thank you for time. thank you we ask that you bless it multiply it in jesus name in amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. amen now father as we leave this place oh and then you'll pray after that okay.
All right, one announcement really quick. If you haven't gotten your hands on Pastor Carolyn's book, um, please do so. Um, if you need help getting the book, please let us know, let um, myself, Pastor Monette know, yes. and um, we'll help you all to get a copy because we're going to do a book club in July. And a lot of times when people do book clubs, they don't actually have the author with them, but we are so blessed. Um, so we'll be able to, to just hear from her, hear how she was led by God and um, just okay. get her heart on it. So get the book, get it read in the next month or so, not so, like in the next three to four weeks, um, because we want to do this book club. We're going to have the author for real? We're going to have the author. And what? you might have some things said that's not in the book. <gasps> and yeah, we might get some extras. Hold on, hold on. I watched Meet the Browns last night. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Y'all know that's my show. Whenever I feel like laughing, Sister Betty, I'll put it. He be tearing them scriptures up, but he be trying. So, uh, <laughs> he tried to hit some scriptures the other night. I just threw the Bible down. So this boy here. Uh, oh, we I'm can't, excited. We can't go without uh, listening to Minister Al. Oh. That's right. He's he That's owes right. us a joke. You gotta tell that one from yesterday. You gotta tell the one from last night. <laughs> yes. That one, you gotta tell that one. Yeah. And then after you say the joke, closes in prayer, whether it's funny or not. <laughs> <laughs> or should you pray first? No, you commit oh, to no. prayer. See, this is where you commit. I'm not gonna pray if the joke ain't funny. No, you commit to prayer whether it's funny or not. <laughs> all right, all right. Wait, can you unmute? No, he praying. That look like <laughs> Unmute yourself, brother. Hit the hit the microphone. It's somewhere. I don't know what you're on. There you go. There you go. A amen. 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 All right, I got a little quick one for you. Great one. Amen. That was a good word. Thank you for that, Possum. Oh yeah. Commitment. That was a good joke. Thank you. He said, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, boy. Uh, uh, uh. Well, here we go. A man with no arms walks into a church and asks the priest if he could be the new bell ringer. <laughs> Is this the, the priest the said one. he I was. The priest said he was unsure if he could hire him, but would give him a chance. The man went to the bell tower and started ringing into the bells, running into the bells head first to make the most beautiful sounds the priest had ever heard. Unfortunately, on his second attempt, the man missed the bell and fell out of the tower and died. Jesus. The priest ran outside to the body and asked the gathering crowd if anyone knew who it was. And they all said no. But his face did ring a bell. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> a few minutes later, another man walked up and claimed that the homeless man was a dead ringer for his brother. <laughs> Yesterday. Last night. Yes. Now you gotta do that one from yesterday. Please. You remember it? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it was a man that broke into this lady's house. And when he broke in, he started going up the steps because he heard her up there. When he got halfway up the steps, all he could hear was Acts 238. Acts 238. She kept on saying those that, that scripture right there, Acts 238. She was saying it out loud. So the man, he got stuck. And then she called the cops and stuff. And then when the cops came, he was still standing in the middle of the steps, stuck. He couldn't move. So the police officer said, why, why are you still here? Why are you just standing there like that? He said, all I heard of her that she all I heard her say is that she had an axe in 238. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
She said, I know where she got an axe in 238. 238. Uh-huh. What, right. uh -oh, what do priests say to get rid of insects in the church? Wave. Let us spray. Let us spray. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got now let us pray. How's <laughs> top you to pray? Let us pray. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You got yes, you. Mister, oh. you got to close this out in prayer. Okay. Yeah, let us pray. Let's pray. Let us pray. <laughs> Well, dear Lord, we just thank you, Father, for just allowing us to come together today, Father, on a new day that we've never seen before. We don't take it lightly, Lord. We just ask that you just continue to pour into our leadership as they pour into us, Father. Also, just let these words not fall on deaf ears, Lord, but let it be planted, rooted, anchored in our souls, Father. We also ask, Lord, that you would just reach out and touch those families of those slain little angels father yeah. that were innocent lord and we know that you, you look after babies and fools and lord so we don't know what's going on but we just ask that you would just move your mighty hand and all these killings uh that's going on around the country and stuff father we just ask that you should also uh uh stop the the, the madness of the uh, uh, uh of the guns that that are out of control father and, yeah. and this touch the leadership lord that they can come up with for a system a method that so many guns won't be available. They even have got guns now called ghost guns. Mm. They don't have no serial numbers on them, Lord. Wow. And we just ask that you will just, you know, move your mighty hand to eliminate yes. the possibilities and the opportunities mm. that the people that these guns hands that, that they're falling into, Lord. We yes. ask that you would just put a stop to it, Lord. It's a lot of people that are hurting, Bob, and we you really don't realize how hurt they are until you have to walk in their shoes. So a lot of people feeling pain right now of over all these senseless murders, Lord. So we just ask that you would just, you know, stop the madness with these people, Father, and just give the leadership the ability uh, to make some changes in the laws, Father. So with that saying, we just thank you, Lord, for another day. We ask that you continue to, to open our minds and our hearts to follow you, Lord, to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, and let us have a new revelation every day, Lord, to carry out the mission that you have put upon us and what we were born for. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.